Hi again everybody, Tim Drudge here, View from the South Stands, coming to you on Sunday, the day after Toronto FC's fifth in a row loss to start off the 2012 uh, campaign in Major League Soccer. Uh, the inaugural campaign, we lost four games in a row, and then of course came the uh, magical game where Danny Dicchio uh, scored the first goal in team history, the team won 3-1. Uh, and uh, uh, got their first win and the seat cushions flew like uh, snowflakes. And ironically we've got Chicago coming up again uh, on Saturday and let's all hope that uh, for once uh, history definitely repeats itself. It's real hard sometimes to actually try and be upbeat when the team is not giving us a lot to be upbeat about when it comes to playing Major League Soccer and other than Seattle and uh, San Jose, yes, they've been doing well so far, but I think are going to be found out as, as at best an average team in the Western Conference. Everybody that the Reds have played uh, this year, save for Seattle, who's uh, one of the better teams in the league, San Jose has been doing well to start the season. If you look at the crew, again, middle of the road, middling team, average team, not a lot of punch up top. They come here, they win. The Montreal Impact, an expansion team. We go to their town, and uh, we lose and we only play with a sense of urgency for maybe 10 minutes. Uh, and Shivas, without TFC killer Juan Pablo on hell, uh, and if he was there, he scores buckets of goals against TFC more than any other uh, player that's ever uh, uh, laced up against the Reds. If he would have played, it probably would have been 4 or 5 nil. Who knows with the luck that he has in Toronto. But it ended up being 1 nil uh, against an awful Shivas USA team. I think they're awful. I think they're one of the poorest teams in the league in either the East or the West Conference. They get one chance on net. We do poor marking defensively again. They get a goal. They hold on. They win. And TFC is 0-5. But making Shivas and making Montreal and making the crew look as good as we did, frankly, is a real accomplishment and not a, a, an accomplishment that the team should take any pride in whatsoever. Aaron Vinter chalked, uh, chalked yesterday up to bad luck, saying that in the second half uh, the team took it to Shivas, uh, and offensively they did have some pretty good numbers. I'm just looking at the box score now, and uh, uh, some of the offensive numbers that TFC usually are lacking on were actually pretty good. Uh, they had 14 shots on goal. Not bad. Uh, 14 shots, I should say. However, only five of those shots hit the, uh, hit the net. Uh, so really there were only five, four or five chances to do anything significant. Uh, the Reds had 13 corner kicks. Usually it's uh, uh, three or four corner kicks a game that they actually have. Uh, they were only offside once. So uh, uh, there were some things that they were doing offensively that uh, in the second half that were better. Uh, uh, and again, there was much more of a sense of urgency to a degree in the second half of the Shivas game than there's been in any other game this season. But still, you've got to put the ball in the back of the net. And uh, Kuvermans, Plata, and Johnson, uh, whether it be the service that they're getting or not getting from the midfielders, whether it be the absence of Frings, whether it be uh, Morgan and Eckersley not bounding down the wings uh, and, and getting balls into the box the way that they are when Frings is playing sweeper and, and we were doing so well in the Champions League. I don't know what it is, but uh, the offensive woes, uh, are obviously just as critical as the defensive woes that this team is having. Uh, Winter chalked all of that up to luck yesterday. And I'll give him the benefit of the doubt uh, that yes, TFC didn't exactly have our shoes up their arses yesterday. But uh, uh, two goals, four uh, in five games in the league, that's not bad luck. That's just poor finishing. Uh, three scoreless home games, that's not bad luck. That's just simply brutal. Uh, and a lot of empty seats were in that stadium yesterday. They announced the crowd at just a little over 18,500. I would say probably, uh, from my vantage point in the south stands, I get to see the entire stadium out uh, in front of me. Uh, I would say that there were probably maybe 14,000 fans in the stands yesterday. Uh, not exactly an ideal day weather-wise. But still, I think uh, the shine is truly off the rose right now, and the only thing that's going to get that stadium filled uh, is going to be a winning product, and Lord knows how long that's going to take. Oh, uh, 
it's really, really difficult to be upbeat, as I stated off the top, when we've had such dreck uh, uh, as paying customers to actually deal with. Uh, Adrian Can, I think, was a, uh, was a glimmer of some hope yesterday. Uh, he looked good in his return. He looked mobile. He looked quick. Uh, he looked energetic. Uh, and he looked quite confident. Uh, Luis Silva, uh, who, of course, uh, did so well for us in the Champions League, uh, played for our, our, our $2 million man, Julian de Guzman, uh, the sixth uh, highest paid player in the league, uh, who didn't even come close to getting on the pitch yesterday in uh, a massively important game. He was actually, uh, you know, rested uh, or benched, whatever you want to call it, for a rookie. And uh, the rookie stank yesterday. I don't think uh, 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 the only time I heard Silva's name is in the uh, uh, when, in, when the PA announcer did the starting eleven, and when they actually pulled him off the pitch for Eric Avila. A Avila again, another forgotten man uh, who looked pretty good and uh, at times last season who hasn't really factored in uh, to the plan so far this year. Uh, he actually uh, did put Ryan Johnson in on a uh, on a great chance that the Shivas goalie. Kennedy, I think his name is, made a wonderful save on to keep the game 1-0 for Chivas. But again, he was only on the pitch for 20 minutes. And again, Julian de Guzman, nowhere near the field. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't get the nuances of this sport like some other people do. But uh, when you're paid that kind of money, you can't d disassociate the money from the player in this league. It's a salary cap league. It is what it is. When you've got a designated player slot tied up uh, in a defensive midfielder who uh, has some nice touches on the ball and has a few good games here and there, but when he's not actually consistently delivering game in and game out, tying that much money up uh, and tying that spot up, that designated player spot up in a player who's not bringing the goods consistently week in and week out uh, is, a, uh, is a real problem. And I can probably count on the fingers of one hand uh, fingers and thumb, you know, five of them uh, games where I thought he was uh, he was outstanding in his three years in Toronto. Now you might say, okay, Danny Kuvermans, uh, again a two million dollar man who's not scoring goals. Uh, again, a very valid point. I think uh, Kuvermans had his best game of the season yesterday. Uh, overall, I think uh, he did everything but score in the second half, and uh, uh, he hasn't taken uh, nights off the way I feel personally Julian de Guzman has. So I'm willing to give him a little more benefit of the doubt over what, 20 odd games he's played for TFC versus over 100 games that uh, Julian de Guzman has played. So Aaron Vinter talked about luck and uh, he talked about bad luck. Luck is always going to be a factor to a degree. Uh, uh, whether it's a small degree or a large degree is always going to have an impact. The ball is round, there are circumstances uh, there's human beings, there's uh, mistakes, there's, uh, you know, accidents, there's, 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 you know, force majeure, act of God, there's any number of things that can come into play. And I'm willing, again, to give him the benefit of the doubt when he said the team didn't have Lady Luck on their side yesterday. But probability says that Luck is not going to be as big a factor over the long run that it is going to be, say, for a 45-minute second half like it was yesterday uh, at BMO Field where it looked like uh, the only luck uh, was with Shivas and not with Toronto. But luck doesn't explain 0-5. Luck doesn't explain two goals for and ten goals against. Luck doesn't explain uh, an inconsistent uh, uh, level of play from, from virtually everybody uh, on the team with a couple of exceptions. I think Eckersley has been okay uh, this season. I think uh, Terry Dunfield uh, has had his moments this season. Uh, I think uh, uh, players like uh, uh, Milos Kosic have been uh, good this season as well, but I challenge any other fan out there to actually name me a player that's been uh, as consistent as those guys have been for any significant period of time. This is Aaron Vinter's team, with a couple of exceptions. These are the players that him and Bob DeClerc and Paul Mariner brought in, and uh, uh, they're the ones that are coming up with the lineups each week that have not been consistent enough to deliver on the goods. Now, Torsten Frings was on the bench uh, on Saturday, and uh, according to Aaron Vinter, that was a psychological move. Uh, he didn't factor in the game. He wasn't planning uh, to use him 
yesterday, and he didn't. Uh, uh, but uh, if uh, the recovery goes to schedule, he's going to be available for the game uh, next week versus Chicago. And again, I promised I wouldn't use the phrase must win, but I can tell you right now, uh, uh, a, a loss means that this season is done. I'm, I'm really willing to go out and say that if this team loses a sixth straight game, all of the things that come from uh, you know, pressure from the front office, pressure from the fans, pressure from the media, uh, uh, pressure within the, uh, the dressing room, uh, all of the uh, the things that uh, you know a winning streak can sort of smooth over, over boil to the surface. That's when the panic trades start. That's when the uh, uh, that's when the uh, you know the hostility. Uh, uh, potentially within the dressing room sort of spills out into the public. That's when things can really, really, really implode. And this team very well might be there if they lose for a sixth straight time. Uh, one final thing I want to just put out there is uh, this team obviously is going to have a struggle considering the hole that they've dug for themselves to make the playoffs this year. Uh, it may already be a lost cause, I don't know, but it's going to be a struggle, it's going to be a closely run thing, and uh, uh, the fans uh, uh, and the coaching staff have all basically said that this season is going to be yet another disappointment if they don't make the playoffs once and for all. we got the Voyager's Cup coming up in a few weeks' time, and uh, we've got the impact to play twice. If we beat the Impact, then we're going to have to play most likely Vancouver. Uh, if we beat Vancouver and retain the trophy, uh, then we're going to have to go. Uh, then we're going to have to go back into uh, uh, the Champions League qualifying. So you're looking at another six games, uh, eight games. You're looking at ten more games uh, versus two if we end up losing uh, against Montreal. Part of me dare to dare I say it, but part of me uh, uh, wants to say that. If we end up losing uh, versus Montreal in the uh, uh, in the Voyagers Cup this year, yeah, I'm going to be upset. And I'm going to be angry, and I'm going to be disappointed. But it may not necessarily be the worst thing in the world. This team needs to make the playoffs this year, or at the very least, needs to make a run uh, towards respectability in Major League Soccer. Damned everything else. And uh, uh, if they're able to balance the two, great. Uh, they weren't able to balance them last year. Uh, uh, and I'm not sure if they have got the uh, ability to do it again this year, but if we end up losing uh, in uh, uh, the Voyager's Cup uh, or getting knocked out of CONCACAF, whatever, uh, it may not necessarily be the worst thing in the world. So I'd like to hear what you guys think about that. Uh, I'll see you on Saturday, and until then I'm going to be reading my thesaurus, trying to find words to replace uh, disappointing, because I'm using that word way too much. Thanks for watching.